I want to make you get really, really, really excited tonight about democracy. And I'm not talking about democracy where you fill in a little, a bunch of little ovals every year or two. And uh, anything else that you can think of, or elect representatives who, when you are concerned with how they're voting in your name, you write them and you get form letters back saying thank you very much and I'm not interested in your opinion, but thanks anyway. I'm talking about real democracy. Different phrases exist. Radical democracy, popular democracy, participatory democracy, the arts of democracy, what else? Direct democracy, deep democracy, deep democracy versus shallow democracy. <laughs> the word democracy is, the root word is demos kratia. Demos, the people, kratia, rule. Very simple, the people rule. That sounds pretty good. Of course, it gets very political very quickly. Who are the people? For a long time, the people were Anglo, Saxon, male, white property owners, 10 or 15% of the population. And social movement after social movement, abolitionists, civil rights, women's, on and on, kept expanding who the people were, at least in this country. And also, another very political question, what is rule? And then we're back to struggling with power over versus what Starhawk called a few nights ago, power from within, or what Joanna Macy calls power with. It's another big question, what the heck is power? And then another profound question, how do we arrange ourselves? to actually create real democracy. And we're pretty out of practice, except at the local activist level. And how do we learn to do democracy? And what if we imagine that democracy is a verb? So instead of thinking we live in a, we instead say we are practicing democracy. What if it isn't a noun at all? What if it actually doesn't even exist? if it's just an it? What if it isn't real unless we're all incredibly actively participating in it? And more questions. What kinds of institutions, arrangements, strategies yield democracy, real democracy? What kinds of institutions, arrangements, strategies yield the kinds of relationships we want to bring about in creating real democracy? And what skills do we need to become really good at what I call the arts of democracy. There's a wonderful book by an American who's been living in Japan for decades called Radical Democracy. I'm gonna mention four books in my talk tonight. And of course, being a radical bookseller, they're all available over there. Um, radical Democracy says, democracy is a state of being. It's the art of the possible. It's a state of public hope. It's performance art. It's very scale sensitive. It's very place oriented. It thrives where people are close to each other and living in place. It requires a deep belief in ourselves. So by that definition, what isn't democracy? Well, government is not democracy because that's not Movement, that's not process, that's not belonging, community, nurturance. And it's not, a kind, it's not a kind of government, it's not an institution. It's more like a vision. It's like a pre-institutional pre thing. It's like a becoming. Now, as many of you know who've read history, our nation's founders were absolutely terrified of authentic democracy. They placed trust in autonomy and individuals and individual rights, not in connection, not in the collective. They, they sought stability and security through property, 
rather than people's relationship with each other. And they valued liberty, it's clear in the founding documents, but they linked it to property rather than to relationship. It was really defined as the freedom to do what you want with what you own. That's kind of how the founding fathers defined liberty. There's a Zen Buddhist named Tom Reed. He has some interesting thoughts about democracy. And he equates it directly with Zen Buddhism. He says, both are about returning to a natural attitude. I really like that. An art of relationship. The body has to be organized in order to be effective. What else comes to mind when you think big? Think big, think bold, think cosmic, think art, think culture and community. What is democracy if we push the boundaries way beyond the kind of democracy that most of us experience in our day-to-day -day lives? Give me some more words or phrases that push the boundaries of what you can imagine, bold, nurturing, cosmic, artistic democracy could look like? Gaia. Gaia. Arian? Arian? Dialogue. <laughs> Interdependence. Interdependence. Responsive. Respect. An experiment. An experiment. Harmonious. Harmonious. Unconditional, what? Dance. Dance. Connectedness. Connectedness and action. Joyful. Joyful. Creative. Always changing. Always changing. Good. All right. Inclusive. Inclusive. Rooted. Rooted. Compassionate. Compassionate. Whole. Whole. Now, it's very interesting. If you look at um, the founding documents of both the state and the country, you find some very, very interesting language that although everything has been incredibly warped and twisted and manipulated to give us almost no authority at all because of the minutiae of all the layers and layers of repressive laws that are piled on top of the the, the ultimate structural laws, the constitution of the state and of the federal government. But if you look at the structure, you see some really beautiful language. Constitutionally, if you can imagine a chart here, there's we the people, and we're on the, we're on the top of the pyramid, and we the people, and this is constitutionally explicitly accurate, what I'm saying. You can, you can find this in the documents. We the people have inherent rights. We're not given rights through the Constitution or the Bill of Rights. Our rights are recognized, they're inherent. All legitimate power resides with us. There is no other player higher than us. We the people are the sovereign. Draw a line down. Government, federal, state, local. We create government, we the people create government, says the Constitution to be accountable to us. We delegate it authority. It has collective duties and responsibilities to us. It's sure not the way it feels for most of us, but that's constitutionally absolutely the law, the highest law of the land. And the Constitution says whatever responsibilities we don't delegate to the federal government is automatically either delegated to state government or, reserve, or we reserve that authority for ourselves as we the people, which is pretty unusual. The American Revolution is, was a pretty unusual revolution in that when sovereignty was seized by, from the king, who claimed that they got sovereignty literally directly from God, it's pretty amazing, that was the claim. When we seized it, sovereignty was invested in we the people, through the American Revolution, not in our government. That's, that's rare. Then we take government and we give it a responsibility, state government, one more line down in the hierarchy, corporations. And we give state government the legal authority, the legal uh, responsibility to charter our subordinate corporations 
for profit and nonprofit, historically uniquely one at a time to serve a public need and to cause no harm. One purpose, to serve a public need and to cause no harm. That was the language for almost a century in the state charters. So corporations are subordinate to us. We create them, we grant them privileges, not rights. Rights are just for living beings. Via their charter, they're responsible to us. 